it is time for a demo uh, and in this demo called Bart Board, uh, I'm quite inspired by that guy. Uh, so in, in, uh, in the TV series Simpsons, uh, Bart will go right on the blackboard occasionally, in the intro at least, uh, and he, he writes what he's not supposed to do. Uh, and with this assignment I will do the same, uh, or this exercise. So we will create a Bart board on a web page, will be a blackboard, and um, on this blackboard, uh, in the long run, we should be able to press the blackboard and all the letters uh, of what we're not supposed to do will be, be, be written. Uh, however, I will start off by doing this without using events uh, and only using the DOM and, and creating the blackboard and adding text to the blackboard. So we will start off by that. Then we will move, move over <laughs> to uh, custom elements. Uh, and from custom elements, we will start adding events ev uh, eventually. So, uh, okay, let's get started. Um, we will uh, uh, start off by this green blank page. Uh, and so if you start the exercise, you will have this in front of you. Uh, and looking at the code, uh, you can see that uh, we have this folder structure when you've done the npm install and you have started the, the environment uh, you should have this we have in the css folder we have a style sheet uh, where this class the blackboard class is the one that uh, we will use where to, to get the, the appearance of a blackboard uh, we could have a look in the index.html and you will see that there is a div element uh, and inside of this div element, we're supposed to add our blackboards. Uh, and when we do that, we add the class, class blackboard to the div, and it will be styled according, uh, according to, to, to this CSS file. Uh, okay, uh, in the JS folder, we only have the app.js for now. Uh, I will probably start off by creating a file, Bartboard file, and, and adding all the code in that file and just requiring it from, from app.js. And I, I, I recommend you to do like the same, that, that, that you keep the code in the app.js to a minimum and, and, and you try to add code to, um, uh, to other files. Let's start then. Okay, so I will create a new uh, file inside of uh, this JS folder. Uh, I will name it Bart board. And this indicates uh, that I'm thinking class or type or creating a new type using the prototype constructor or using class. Uh, I will start off by using uh, the constructor prototype pattern uh, and we will move on from that. Uh, so I'm creating the Bart board.js. Uh, I will create a function called Bart board make it a little bit bigger not that big uh, creating a function called bartboard um, never learn okay uh, and i will export this one using the node modules uh, since we are in this case using webpack uh, the node modules will work uh, out of the box or um, it, it will take our node modules and they, it will compile it to code that runs in the browser that don't have modules, but we could program as, as if we had modules. Uh, so module module dot exports equals, in this case, I will export the Bart board like that. Uh, if I save, nothing will happen. And that is because this Bartboard file isn't watched by, by Webpack in this case. We need to, to require it first. So let's do that. Um, creating a const Bartboard that equals require and dot slash Bartboard like that. I don't need to write dot js since that is... Uh, um, the standard uh, that we use .js for our JavaScript file. So I will get a compiler. Uh, the keyword led is reserved. What? 
I have something running in my Bartberg. Oh. I'm well, if I'm supposed to use let, I will do this this and let Bartboard equals function. Uh, like that. Uh, okay, so Bartboard is assigned a value, never used, so that's fine. Uh, I could have just to be, be sure that everything works, I will do a console.log in Bart board. Save that one. Uh, if, if I look at the, uh, in the in the console right now, you'll see that nothing will be logged and that is because we are not <coughs> we are not calling uh, we are not instantiating new objects of type Bartboard, so we need to do that first. Okay, going to app.js and you new Bart board. Like that, save uh, in Bart board. So everything works just fine. Uh, in this case, it, it, the compiler will complain since, I, since I'm just using new Bart board. Uh, in, in this case, of course, I could have just done, done that, just called the function Bart board. That will be, give us the same result. Uh, and that is because we are not utilizing uh, the fact that we are using uh, instances of objects. We are just calling that function and logging inside of the function. However, we are supposed to add things to this, uh, uh, this type. Uh, and in that case, we need to call it with new to get new instances. But we will later on move away from this approach. But what we will start with this just so that you feel familiar with, with this one as well. Okay, what are we supposed to do? Well, we are when we create a new Bart board, we're supposed to create a div element. We're supposed to insert it into the uh, um, the div with the ID board, and uh, uh, we're supposed to add some text into it. But we will start off by create just creating the div. Uh, I could, of course, create a template and import the template. However, in this case, I will since it's only one div tag, I will do it in line uh, instead. So document dot create element div uh, like that. Let bar bb let bb equals or bb div. It could be called bartboard div. Let bb div equals document create element div, uh, and we need to add a class to this one. So bb div dot class list dot Add right. Uh, is it add? Well, we will see. Uh, we will add the class blackboard. Save. Look at this one. Warnings while compiling. Uh, it's probably not. Uh, I don't remember that one. Uh, is it? Let's look at my lecture. I had it. Uh, do, 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 do. The lectures are good to have sometimes. Uh, where am I doing that? Styles, styles, use classes. Class list add. Well, was correct, right? Oh, well, of course, we haven't done anything yet. So, so okay, I'm, I've added the class to the bbdev. Now we need to add the bbdev to the page to be able to, to add it to the DOM and to get it rendered. So. Let's reference this div with ID board. Uh, I will use the selectors API for that. Document dot query selector. It's only one, uh, and it's an ID, and it's called board. Uh, and to this board, I will append a child, and that child is the BB div, like that. Save, and uh, have a look at the page. And now you see. Uh, I, I added the div, so if we look at the, at the elements, you can look at this one, you will see inside of board, I've created a div and added the class blackboard. And that gives us this, this look, this uh, Bartboard look. Did I make that one bigger as well? Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is more or less everything it takes to create this part board. We could even add some text to it if we like. So I do a bbdev.inner text. I will not pollute the 
global scope. Save and have a look. Well, and there it is. Uh, Bart has written on the blackboard. Um, we could try to add some more Bart boards if we like. Uh, I will do a new Bart board for this one. Uh, oh, a new Bart board. We call it let BB1 equals that one. Let BB2 equals new Bart board. Like that. Save. And we got two blackboards. Uh, of course, they got the same text. Maybe we would like a different kind of text on this one. Uh, then, of course, we could take the text as a uh, argument to the uh, constructor. So we add a parameter called uh, text, uh, and we could have that one as a default text to equals uh, js is good. Um, if I save uh, and we add this inner text to the text like that, uh, it will say JS is good on each and every one. However, if we do, uh, I will not pollute the global scope and I will never ever right in line JavaScript. Save, reload, and we got the two messages uh, in, in, in the, the still. So quite a simple model for doing this. Of course, as I said, we, we don't have any methods. We're not using this on Bartboard. So in this case, it's, it's, it's even quite useless to have a constructor function because we are not taking advantage of, of, of this, the, this concept. However, if we were to add methods to be able to, to, to set and to interact with this blackboard, this might be a good model. In this case, this is more like create part board. We could have it just as a function. Uh, and uh, create part board. In this case, I will change it to not be capitalized. Um, we do it like that. Bart board, I will not pollute the global scope. Uh, and we will get the same result. So there is, oh, oh, it will return undefined. So let's do it like that. So in this case, this is more or less just functions being called. So, what's wrong with this approach then? Well, first of all, this is quite clunky. So, to be able to, to uh, in this case, to be able to, 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 to make this work, we need to have a div ID called board, where all blackboards will be added to this div. We don't have the option to place it wherever we like. Uh, if you want to add more BART boards, you will be Need, you, you basically need to code some JS. You will need to change this app.js to the behavior you like. Um, we are kind of say that this is one thing on this page, this Blackboard, and we have tons of other stuff on the, on, on the, black, uh, on, on the web page as well. We kind of mixing all the CSS, in this case, into this style.css. And we need to always use like, uh, the blackboard to be able to distinguish what is uh, uh, what on this page. So we will have a look at how to fix this soon. So let's have a look at how to uh, create a custom element out of this uh, this bark board. Uh, and custom elements is, is, is not the, the sole solution to this problem because we will probably need to add a shadow DOM and things like that. But we will start off by, by, by looking at custom elements, what it is and how we could benefit from it in, in this exercise. Um, okay, uh, in this case, uh, we can leave this as it is. Uh, and we will 
need to extend the, the type custom uh, uh, HTML element. So every each and every element you find on the web page is of the type HTML element and or an, an inherited type of that type. You could have special types for checkboxes and in, input fields and, and, and such. But in the, in our case, we will just extend the, the HTML element uh, 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 type or class. Uh, we will leave this code for now and I will try to just rewrite this into a simple, simple uh, extension of the HTML element. Okay, so let's start off by doing a, uh, a class uh, bartboard that extends the HTML uh, window dot dot html element like that uh, and we will have a constructor that we will console dot or well the constructor could do this actually for now uh, we will change this later uh, and it could even take this per parameter as that. Do, do, do. I have a lot of errors. I've probably done something wrong. Uh, too many blank lines. Oh, well, let's in this one. That. Uh, Bartboard is defined, but then we used it. We call super. Well, that's nice because we are actually. So the, so the first thing to do in our constructor is to call the super, and that will call the HTML elements, uh, uh, HTML elements constructor. Uh, I've probably written something wrong in this case. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, it will, uh, we need to call it by new as well. Uh, and we will export Bart board. And we will call this one is back to <laughs> capitalized part board new. We'll remove that one. Um, let's see. Uh, still not working. Probably missing something in um, class extend window HTML elements. Uh, what am I missing? What am I missing? So a few minutes of, of thinking, um, I came up with the, what was wrong actually. So when trying to extend the uh, um, uh, HTML element, will not we will not be able to do that until we've actually defined a custom element on the page. So um, I will actually remove this one and not extend the window uh, uh, the HTML element just to be able to, to, to make this class work first of all. Uh, so in this case we cannot call super because we have no uh, uh, we haven't extended uh, anything uh, so there is no super to call. I just did this we, we add the Google Glow scope back save that one have a look I will not pollute the global scope so it seems like our class syntax is working at least uh, so next step uh, extending uh, this window dot HTML element in many examples you will not see window before HTML element however uh, since we are using standard.js this is uh, uh, mandatory uh, we need to add it uh, to tell that the HTML element is part of the window object. So I will always add that one. Uh, uh, now we get an error saying that we need to extend a uh, called super, uh, and I will do that to save. Uh, however, if I do, you will see that on this line uh, in, in the debugger, we will get a full called illegal constructor. It cannot call super, and this is an indication that this HTML element is probably uh, not defined um, or we don't have access to it anyway. So I add this one in, at the bottom of this page. Um, 
so it says window.customElements.define uh, so this will define a custom element in the browser we will call it Bart uh, uh, a dashboard uh, and uh, we connect it to our cons, uh, class or type. So many things going on here. First of all, uh, this string needs to be have a dash in the middle because that is the naming convention for custom elements. So we need to call it Bart board or black dashboard or something like that. We cannot call it BB for instance. Uh, so we need a dash. Uh, and Oh, well, that is basically it uh, for now. So when doing this, we are, are, are telling the browser that, hey, we would like to extend uh, and create a custom element. We want to call it Bartboard, and here is the constructor. Okay, save. Uh, everything is still working. However, when we created a custom element, we're not supposed to, to, to call this uh, 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 class with a new keyword. We're supposed to use the built-in DOM, app, uh, DOM uh, uh, API, for instance, create element or create element by, by just adding it to the HTML. So I will do some changes here, just so that we will not be tempted to call this one with new. First of all, I will rename uh, uh, the file uh, from Bartboard in constructor form to what the HTML element will be called, Bartboard. Like that. Going to app.js, we need to change some things. Bart board, dashboard. Uh, we could still call it Bart board if we like, but I would rather see us having it uh, uh, in in uh, um, uh, nothing capitalized B. Uh, in this case, actually, we could probably just be better off with just requiring this telling. The browser, hey, we would like to use this object so that Webpack will, will include it. Because when, what happens is that when the browser interprets our JavaScript file, it will see that it has, or basically it's this code that will be interpreted. So it will notice that, okay, we have a class. Okay, so we have a class and then it will execute this line of code. And by executing this line of code, it registers this component or this a custom element uh, and then it will export it and, and the export thing in this case is more or less just to be able to separate this into to our uh, into separate files uh, and webpack does the job for us of course we could just have taken this code added it to a bartboard.js and in index.html we could have uh, um, included the script bartboard.js instead and we we don't need to use webpack or uh, or require and exports but for the sake of it we will start off by doing this because you will add a lot of more files and 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 you need some way of referencing the referencing those files so app.js quite empty the bartboard just like this uh, and if we refresh the browser, nothing is wrong. However, we will not get a Bart board. So now we have two options to get the Bart board. First option, uh, using create element. Second option, uh, just adding it to the HTML. We can start off by the letter. Uh, so I will um, uh, create a Bart board like that and save. Uh, However, we need to check the code. So when I do this, uh, I say that, actually, we will remove that one. Since the constructor for HTML element shouldn't actually take any parameters. And I love JS. Wonder if you do after this assignment though. Uh, okay. Uh, in, in the constructor, we will reference the div and we will add, create a div, we will add a class to that div and, and do other things. However, when, when we are our own, and in this case this, if I were to reference write this dot, this would refer to this Bartboard instance, this, this HTML element. 
So there is actually no need for us to create yet another element inside and put it inside a div. Uh, so instead of creating this div, we could just say this dot class list add blackboard and this dot inner text I love JS and there is no need to add it to the DOM even because we have already done that inside of index.html. Fingers crossed. Well, it is working. The good thing now is we have a lot, uh, much more independence. We could place this BART board wherever we like. I could place it outside of the div with the ID board. And if we have a look in, in uh, the DOM, you will see that it's still inside of that one. Okay, reload, reload, reload. Uh, okay, so now the div is empty and the BART board is outside of the div. So no need to telling the one who uh, who's supposed to use this custom element where to put it. We just put it wherever we like. Good thing. However, I will still leave this one to show you another way of, of creating this element. So if we like, we could do this using code instead. We could use uh, create a let bb1 equals document dot create element create a BART board uh, and we uh, still need to query document dot query selector uh, id board dot append child uh, bb1 save do 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 blank line more than one blank line okay like that well that didn't turn out the way oh well I've of course well that is interesting so yeah so this is uh, yeah we will address this problem so what I am doing I'm actually adding this uh, blackboard this is probably how things in the browser will in which all the things will render. So doing things like this in the constructor, constructor like uh, working with the DOM object inside of the constructor isn't optimal. Instead, we should use a function for this. Uh, if we have a look in the lecture, uh, you will see that I have this function, the connected callback function. Uh, and connected callback is called when this object is being added to the DOM. And then we could do things with this object, like adding text or whatever. So let's do that. Let's move it from the constructor to the connected callback function or method. Uh, we move this code to that one, save. Useless constructor, it's not useless. More or less it is right now, but it will not be in the future. So I will still leave it. Well, now you see. Uh, so if we look at the one we created using JavaScript, uh, it's a bot board with a class bla blackboard and it has its text inside of it. The same thing with the one, of course, that I wrote in, uh, uh, the one that I wrote in, in the HTML. Now you see some strange behaviors. So this is actually not the code I wrote. I wrote blackboard, Bart board, and then when I look in the browser, you see that this one has a class set to it. What? What happened? And it has some text inside of it. So the user will probably be quite confu confused over this behavior. So, so, so I am like writing this and the result is this. What is going on? You will never see this on, on other <laughs> built-in objects like a div. If you add a div, it will not automatically get a class set. Uh, so this behavior is kind of strange and we need to move away from this behavior. Uh, and this is where the shadow DOM uh, uh, comes in. So we could actually add our own HTML and our own things 
to the shadow uh, DOM. That is the DOM behind the object. Uh, if we were to just add, probably try at least, if I had just add a video element like that, uh, and we refresh the browser, you will see that, okay, so I have a video element here. Uh, hasn't added anything. However, I could extend and look at the shadow DOM. So this video element has a shadow DOM. Inside of the shadow DOM, it has a div with a lot of like elements and styling and things like that. Uh, normally you will not see this. Uh, I think you actually in the browser need to add a flag on the development tools or something like that to sh that says show shadow root. I'm not sure if they changed it or, or it's still like that. But So for the, for the common developer, this will just say video, like we anticipate with the attributes that we, we, we have. So our job now is to, to, to add uh, or remove this strange behavior and move it into a shadow DOM. So let's look at the shadow DOM then. Uh, We could go to the constructor. So I will copy this um, because what we will do is I, we will, in this case, create a new template, an HTML template. Uh, and we will add some HTML to this template. And then we will add this template as a shadow DOM on, on this object. Um, so let's do that. Let's start off by creating our template. And we will do that. In the top of our module, uh, and we could call it the template. That template or const even don't need to change that one. Uh, template equals document dot create element uh, template. So we create ourselves a template. We take that template and do an inner HTML. I'm not a super fan of inner HTML, but in this case it's quite effective. Uh, and I need a container to add my text to. This isn't necessary, but I think it would be neat if we could add a, an, a P element inside of the, the bark board and have the text inside of the P element. So I will actually add that one. Uh, P uh, like that. We could even give it an ID of uh, text. So remember this, I mean, if, if someone adds an ID outside of, of this shadow DOM with the same ID like text, that doesn't matter because the shadow DOM is its own document fragment. Um, I could even add styles, and we will do that uh, soon, to this uh, um, uh, uh, shadow DOM. But we'll start off by, by just this simple template. Uh, note that I'm using uh, the template literal, the, the the kind of yeah skewed tick uh, instead of the 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 more straight one. Uh, so we have our template, and inside of the constructor we will actually connect this template. I think I copied the code actually. So uh, we tell uh, uh, the browser that we want to attach a shadow to this object. So this attach shadow mode open. Uh, I, I don't remember uh, what close does in this case. Uh, however, we probably, I think, just have it open and it will work. Um, next up, uh, we append the content. So we take the content of this template, basically the inner HTML more or less. We take that and we clone that with true set and because we do want to do deep copy if we have uh, have elements inside of other elements uh, and we append it to the shadow root and we could just do that for now have a look at uh, what happened i will uh, go ahead remove the video element save go back reload the video is still there. Why are you still there? I didn't save. Okay. Reload. Okay. We have our bot board. If we look inside of that one, we now have a shadow root. 
and in that shadow root we have a p with an id text uh, so instead of of like uh, adding the text right into the bartboard we could add it into the p if we like instead and oh it doesn't even show up anymore when it's not uh, so that text node isn't being shown could be since we have a shadow root I guess well that's new for me um, so instead of adding this uh, to the inner text like this we should add it to uh, uh, to the P of course we could do something like this I love JS and save and that will be our default behavior now uh, so if we look we will have this p with this text and, and now we have our default text basically so that that has taken care of that problem we will soon see how to add uh, our own text to this element however i want to address this uh, style sheet first of all so to be able to use this custom element not only do we need to some way add this part board .js, we also need to remember to into our style add this blackboard thing uh, and this is quite clunky uh, so instead of, of of having this in an external file i will actually take this one remove it from uh, this style sheet and go in and add it to our template so in the template, I will add inline style sheets, or at least in document style sheets. I will take the code, copy it from, from the CSS, and instead of doing this dot .blackboard adding a class, we could, of course, add like the class blackboard to this P element if we like. However, if we do a colon... Uh, uh, colon host uh, so if we do a host colon host we will uh, reference the part board element this if we talk down here this is referring to part board element and in the style host is referring to the part board element uh, and you will see why so if we save that one <coughs> we go here and we have a look at the Bart board. It has a shadow root. If we open the shadow root, it has this style. And this style will be executed by the browser. And because we're inside of the, the shadow root, host will reference the host of the shadow root, basically the Bart board. So in this case, this class blackboard is, is totally redundant. Uh, and we could get rid of that one. Uh, save, remove. Uh, and let's have a look in the index.html. So in this case, we're only adding Bartboard. And in app.js case, we're just creating the Bartboard element and adding it to the DOM. Save, reload, and it still works. And now the behavior is more like the user anticipated. So we added Bartboard and nothing has been added. We're just adding this Bartboard and we get this nice rendering up there uh, however well we have the shadow root but hey if you look at the video uh, element for instance we have that as well and we have made all our changes inside of the shadow root and that is really the nice thing with this next up adding attributes we need to add an attribute to this with our own text because we want this blackboard to say something uh, that we could add to it and I would probably in the index.html I would like to do it like text uh, I will not and something like that so if I save nothing will happen I mean it will still say I love the yes uh, so we need to, to change this behavior uh, Of course, we could do something like uh, in the connected callback, we could uh, do uh, this dot 
has attribute text. So if this instead of writing an if I'm using uh, uh, this one. So if this has attribute text, then return or uh, let text equals that one. This uh, well, I could write it with an if statement, and then we could rewrite it. I think you will have understand it then, uh, better. Uh, so. If this has attribute text, let text text equal let text. So if it has attribute text, we will well. It's even better in this case to use an if actually, because if it has an attribute text, um, then we could take uh, uh, um, this shadow root dot then we will reference the shadow root dot query selector find the p and that had the L id text sorry text the id text and set that piece inner text to equal this dot uh, get attribute text so what is happening here so we, we when we add this element to the dom we're making a test so does this element have a attribute called text so if we have added text attribute this code will run otherwise nothing will happen so the default behavior is still there uh, and if we do that we say that okay find the shadow root and query selector the text element inside of the shadow this one and change that's in the text to whatever the text attribute was what what the text attribute is going back you will see that this one when i wrote text it will say i will not however this one since it has no text attribute it will still say i love js uh, but we could change that, of course. We can do a bb one dot set attribute um, text to be. This is working really well. Did I get that one right? And now you'll see that when we attach doing this one, a pen child, attach this to the DOM, this code will be run even for that, that element and the default text will be changed. Well, that works. However, what will not work is this. So if I do a bb1.set attribute text to, huh? Save. To that, it will not work. And that is because this connected attribute, a uh, connected callback, will only be called once when the element is added to the DOM, or if maybe if we move it or, or something like that. But oh, now it will not work anymore. Uh, I could, of course, or could I? Well, that is a strange thing to test if we try to add it once again, like that. Uh, well, now it works. So we are pro we are basically just telling the browser to re-add it. However, this is not the behavior that web developers are used to. So 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 we need to to to, to find a better way. And 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 that is we need this clause to be able to 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 identify when the attribute changes uh, inside of the browser. And we have. Uh, uh, um, properties and methods for doing this that are built into to the HTML element or defined in the HTML element type. One being, and I don't, re I'm not done this custom elements to, for too long, so I don't remember them by heart. Uh, but if we go to, I believe this slide, I have them. It's those two uh, uh, 
uh, properties and uh, uh, methods. So let's add them and let's talk about them. So first of all, uh, this one, the observed attributes, this is telling the browser, okay, I would like you, we tell the browser that we would like the browser to watch for changes in the attributes provided in this array. So in this case, I'm only writing text. This makes it so that the browser will look for changes in text. However, if we change another attribute, the browser will not notify us. Uh, so I could, of course, just add a lot of attrib attributes to this uh, 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 array if I, if, if I like. And this one should be called observed attributes and it should be called static uh, uh, or this is a static uh, property. Uh, so uh, you will not be able to, if you were to instantiate objects out of the Bartboard type, you will not be able to call uh, uh, observed attributes on the uh, instantiated object. However, we could call it on the type like writing Bartboard dot uh, observed attributes if we would like to find out which attributes are being um, observed. Okay, so when the browser finds that something is changing in this one, it will call attribute changed callback. Uh, so in this one, uh, we would like to do more or less the same thing as in this one. And because of that, I will create a function called or method called update rendering like that I will move this code into that one and I will call update rendering from both attribute changed callback and connected callback and I will call this one uh, and it will do the same thing check if it has its attribute if it does it will uh, add it so we are not taking into account that we could have several attributes. Uh, this will be quite uh, not as eff efficient if we had, because then we should have some kind of logic changing, okay, which attribute what changed? Was it this one? Well, then we should do something. Maybe we could have a look at that as well, if we get this to work. So, okay, uh, well, let's remove this one. Does it still work? It does, because now it will observe when we change this attribute. Maybe it even does if I do this. I haven't tried this. Save, yeah, it does. So it will trigger even if the developer goes into the browser and changes that dynamically using the debugger. Perfect, it works just like we wanted. However, as I said, instead of calling update rendering, we could have uh, checked if if name has if it's text that's changed then we should do this one so something like instead of this one we could do if whoa sorry if name equals text so if it's the text attribute uh, then we should do something what should we do we should we should go to the shadow root, query the text, uh, and change that inner text to new value, like that. And then we don't need to update the rendering all the time. This would work just as fine. Uh, then we could put back this one into the connected callback if we like. Get rid of the update uh, rendering altogether and this will also work perfectly fine. Whatever model you prefer is fine. For now, um, we will probably add some more attributes on some uh, assignments uh, and exercises, and then you will uh, see different behaviors or, 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 or different ways of working with this. But this concludes the DOM more or less, a uh, DOM part of this uh, uh, demo. I will be back, but on a later date, uh, but for you, just after a short break. Uh, and we will have a look at how to add events to this model. So how, how could we make this Blackboard interactive by like clicking the mouse and it will start writing uh, this text we have. But that's, that's next.